I, I was the first person who has access to HRT before I was uh, 18. Living in Europe as a transgender person can be complicated, especially when you're young. In 2022, it was one of the highest uptakes of violence against Europe's LGBTQ community in almost a decade, especially for its transgender community. Some EU member states have passed progressive gender legislation, yet others have further restricted access to trans health care for minors. This Pride Month, we at Your News spoke to some of the people trying to make gender affirming care more accessible in the bloc. For Alex, the process was relatively rapid, but it quickly became more difficult for those after him. They just let me do that because I was 17 and 10 months and because my parents were, were very supportive. I, I just talked to my endocrinologist like a few days ago and she said that they were forced to shut down the system because uh, there wasn't any enough people who would like to work for that. In Ireland, waiting lists can be up to seven years long. I have heard that some young people um, and their parents, out of sheer desperation, are trying to access healthcare um, abroad and uh, access medication abroad and online, but without any medical supervision in our, here in Ireland, which is something that's very dangerous. In Spain, GPs will generally refer young people to a clinic that will help them access the care they want, according to its largest LGBTQ plus org. But it all depends on the region. No es lo mismo ahora mismo ser trans o LGBTI en en Canarias que que en Castilla y León. Tienen menos derechos en Castilla y León. Y va a depender de la voluntad de los médicos de que te atiendan, pero no está garantizado por ley. For some, it's not just about access to care but also about being accepted. For me, I think when my family started to accepting it and they, they call me the right pronouns and they call me by my name, I think it does like half or more of the job. Was there any real discussion of the risks and the side effects and... No. No, there's not. And I know that people want to think that there is, but there's not. The truth is, is that medical transition is experimental. We have um, studies that said that medical transition helps mental health, helps mental health with kids. They've all been retracted, modified, changed. But the only long-term study tells us seven to 10 years is when transgender people are the most suicidal. After? After surgery. But that's transphobic to say. For the first time in history, a marginalized group has a huge dollar sign on the top of their head. We have five children's hospitals in the United States promoting that. And what? That's a phalloplasty. That's a bottom surgery. We have five children's hospitals in the United States telling girls that they can be boys at $70,000 a pop in a surgery that has a 67% complication rate. That will kill me from infection that I can't sue on. We're butchering a generation of children because nobody's willing to talk about anything. I have three kids at the age that they're doing this to kids. I'm not transphobic. I love my kids, and I love other people's kids, and you should too. This is wrong on so many levels. Can kids consent? Do you think kids are no. capable of consenting to this? No, they're not. Being a parent is loving the hell out of your kids and helping them see around corners.